Are you doing your part so that God can do his? What do I mean? You remember the story of Jericho? Now watch this. You might, people might say when they hear the story, so if they didn't have to fight, why did they have to walk around the city seven times? And then there's another story where Elisha, uh, Naaman the leper, comes to receive a miracle so that he can be healed of his, of his physical, physical condition. And Gehazi tells Naaman, Elisha said to go dip into the Jordan River seven times. Seven times he goes dips into the Jordan River. And when he comes up and out of that water, he has brand new baby skin, youthful skin, as if there was no leprosy ever to be seen and or known or found ever again. And then Jericho, they walked around seven times and their obedience to what it was that God had instructed, the walls came down. So let me ask you a question today. Are you doing your part? Are you obedient to what God has asked for you to do so that he can do what he needs to do? See, God, God didn't tell them to fight. He said to march. <laughs> See, God didn't tell Naaman, you know, well, come on in and Let's anoint you with oil. No, he gave him a command or a word. Go into the water. Go into the water. We know today, baptism. Go into the water. And if you do as I say, what you come to receive, you shall get. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Naaman almost walked away from his miracle. He actually got upset with Elisha. As if paraphrasing, how dare him tell me to go dip in that dirty water? Why can't he just come out here and wave his hand over me and do his trick? Because <laughs> you know how sometimes people, they'll say stuff like that. But sometimes, could it very well be that God is waiting for you? to do your part so that he can do his because here's the reality watch this the woman with the issue of blood she could have stayed home that day she could have said you know what no nah, i better not because if i do i'm gonna get in trouble if i do this could cost me everything if i do there could be consequences but if I don't, I may never know. If I don't go, if I don't risk it and step out and meet him and find him as he's en route just to touch him, if I don't, what if she would have played it safe that day? What if she would have allowed the condition, the law, to hinder her and stop her from the miracle that she by the touch received. What if, just what if, what if she would have stayed home? We would have never known her story. Just what if blind Bartimaeus would have never yelled out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Even while they try to get him to quiet down and to be quiet. Yet he got louder and called upon the Lord. And the Bible says that Jesus stopped and brought him to the Lord. And Bartimaeus was no longer, was no longer held by the condition of not being able to see. He now was able to see and received his miracle because he cried out and called upon the Lord. He didn't allow the circumstance. He didn't allow, a pe he didn't allow the people. 
to stop him and to rob him from the miracle that only Jesus could bring. So I say to you again today, what is that thing? What is that miracle for you today that you need God to move in and upon your life? Are you going to allow people to talk you out of your miracle? Are you going to allow even your own carnal thoughts to talk you out of your miracle? Are you going to allow the circumstances to talk you out of your miracle? What you need to do is, is feed yourself with the word, with faith. Faith comes by hearing. My question to you is this. Who are you listening to? What preachers are you listening to? If they're not preaching faith, cut it off. If they're not preaching faith, cut it off because you're not going to get what you need. What you need is the preachers of faith that will revive and, and, and fan the flame within your heart to get the to get your faith to arise, to get you and to build you up. Not that you got to work, God, but there's things that sometimes in this moment, that you might be in doubt. You need faith. And faith preachers will come your way. And you need to take heed. And then listen. And then meditate. In and upon the scriptures. And the word of truth concerning your life. Of what Christ has spoken concerning you. And you hold on. And you stand. When you've done all that you know known to do. You stand faithful and obedient to the gospel of Christ, to his truth, to his word, that is the seed that is growing in you, that is producing in you the life. Watch this here real quick. Let me just, let me just show you this here real quick. John 6, 63. It is the spirit who gives life. Who? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. What does the Bible say? To be carnally minded is death. So if you try to figure this out here, there's no life there. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So you need to renew your mind to truth. Hold on to truth and faith. Build yourself and build your faith by the word of God. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Spending time in prayer. Intimate moments with the Lord. Worshiping and praising and in your word and uh, ministering and allowing those that are preaching truth to you. And I understand people want empathy and they want, you know, for people to, you know, comfort them and that's okay. But if they're not feeding you faith, if, if they're not feeding you truth, how do you expect to get up and out of that situation that only faith by the spirit of Christ can only bring and do in your life or what it is you have need of? So I want to encourage you today, brothers and sisters, faith comes by hearing in hearing by the word of God. In John 6, 63, it is the spirit who gives the life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you today are spirit in our life. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke and lifts the burden. Who is the anointing? Christ Jesus. Christ in us, the hope of glory that brings to your spirit, into your heart, into your soul, life. Not just life, but life in abundance. So that faith within your heart comes alive. For you to get to that place and for you to get to that point. And I understand we all at times are in these moments and seasons and times in our life when we need a miracle from God. When we're believing God for, for a mountain to, for, to move. When we're believing God for this situation to change. And we're believing God for that door to open or that breakthrough to come. We're believing God. Faith in God is what we need. And in moments and in moments and times of our life, it's not about figuring out. It's trusting God and believing and knowing 
you will.